So what is the point of leaving your lawn to grow long during the month of May and maybe even into June? Well, you'll be providing a lot of species with the resources to lay their eggs for their larvae to grow, including meadow brown butterflies, speckled woods, ringlets, skippers, marbled whites, small skipper and wall browns. They'll all be laying their eggs on your lawn grasses. So leaving them long provides those species with the food they need. Having a lawn is quite a modern luxury. They're very decorative, they're for leisure. This only began in the mid 1700s when stately homes wanted to show off. It was a real status symbol to have a lawn because you had to have a team of people cutting that lawn with shears and with sides. And there was no such thing as a lawnmower at that time. So the first lawnmower was actually invented around 1830. And within a couple of years, in fact, 1833, we had the first urban parks. So people suddenly began sitting around on lawns, playing games on lawns, having picnics on lawns. The, the idea of a lawn really kicked in. So having a lawn as part of our house, as part of our gardens is relatively new in human society. It's a very new concept. So when you look at a wildflower meadow, which is what No Mong Mei is all about, turning your lawn into a wildflower meadow. When we think of a wildflower meadow, most people think of the, the flowers, but actually a grassland is the basis of the grassland is all about the grasses. And we forget that when you look at a grassland, there's also loads of grass species in there and that each of those grass species provides something special to another species. There are many species of moth and butterfly that are supported within those grass species in your lawn. So we're going to take a whistle-stop tour of the most common grass species you are likely to have in your lawn. So new-build houses typically have a seeded lawn of ryegrass. And when you look at your lawn of ryegrass, it will look probably even shiny, like a velvety carpet. It's a very tough grass and it can be mown to death and it'll still be happy. The next grass you might commonly find in your lawn is a grass called Yorkshire Fog, which is a, a type of soft grass and it has got lovely downy features and it's got a very um, easy to identify feature called stripy pyjamas. So if you go down to the very bottom of the grass, you can see these lovely, lovely pink stripy pyjamas. So Coxfoot is quite a sprawling grass. People don't usually like it in the lawn if they love a velvety lawn, but you will find it in your lawn. Wheat fernal grass which is one of my favourites. It's the, the typical grass that was used in pictures of farmers chewing the end of their grass because it has a flavour in it, which is a bit like almonds, called cumarin. And this little grass um, is actually flowering now. So you might see this in your lawn if you're lucky. And it does survive being grazed or cut regularly. So that's a nice one to have in your lawn. When you let your lawn grow long during month of May and possibly into June, you're providing the resources for a lot of butterfly and moth larvae to grow. So species like meadow brown, speckled wood, ringlets, skippers, marbled white, and several moth species will all be feeding on your lawn species. 